Welcome back to this episode of Country and Cold Cans Podcast. I'm your host, Logan, and today we have a couple special guests with us. Our first, uh, second time guests, actually. We have the guys from Whiskey Foxtrot, Sam Foster and Seth Williams. How are you guys doing? All Good right, evening. all right. Yeah, man. So I'm glad to have you guys back on, y'all, making the drive in this horrible weather. I know it's uh, a lot of rain and wind going on, so oh, yeah. hopefully the drive was good for you guys. Like right. I said, I took a nap between, like, Mebane and Chapel Hill, so it was all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I guess first thing, like, what you guys been up to? I know you just released a new record, been touring, so. Yeah, we uh, we went pretty hard through the end of 2019 on shows, and, uh, and we kind of took it easy through January up until now. Uh, to get ready for the record release that we did last week, February first. Yeah, yeah. Got yeah. that, got that out into the world, and we did our release show at the Ramcat in Winston. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. You had a, it looked like a really good turnout. It was. It was yeah. great. Was that one of the bigger shows y'all had? Or yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, it was a fantastic way to kick off 2019. For sure. Oh yeah. 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 I- I've never actually been to the Ramcat. That's one that I've always I've heard good things about that venue. Oh man! Yeah. But like, how many people does it hold? Because I, I don't think I've ever been out that way much. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Capacity is probably close to a thousand. I oh think. wow! Yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good size rock club. Yeah, though. it's kind of like kind of like the Lincoln. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a big fan of Lincoln. I was just there uh, two weekends ago. I, I, me and my brother and my sister in law come down from DC every. Every year, it seems like for the last like five or six years, we got the uh, road trip to Raleigh. Thank you, America yeah. Aquarium. Those, yeah. 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 yeah, I saw Sam there actually on night one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was kind of funny, like yeah, because as one song was, I think it was Mike and the Moon Pies. Yeah. I think it was on. I saw Sam and I was like, oh shit, there's Sam. I went over there and like tapped him on the shoulder from across the railing, and this this older lady <laughs> stops me. She goes, "Excuse me, this is my favorite song. You're gonna yeah. have to wait." I was like, "I'll catch up with you." Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh lord! Yeah, yeah. People I thought I was about serious to, about. The I know. Music. Right? I was like, "Lord have mercy." She almost hit him in the chips. She really did. I was just like, "All right, I'll back off. I'll, I'll walk away." <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, but that was a good time. But uh, so yeah, so the new record, you know, it's uh, hard lines and headlights, man. I, I really like first. I really dig the album cover. Oh man! Yeah, like, how, so did y'all design that, or how did that come about? It was kind of several things. Uh, we were like, well, what's going to be something that's going to catch somebody's eye, obviously? Mm-hmm. So we did like the old school way of thinking of if this was in a record shop, full press vinyl, like what would that look oh, like? Yeah, Let's yeah. go for that. And you know, the way CD packages right. are now, you yeah. can make it look like a little vinyl. Stick. For sure. But Sam brought up the idea of the, uh, there's a Bruce Springsteen album cover. which Nebraska. Nebraska. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good and, record. And in one of the songs, it mentions a Cutlass, uh, Cutlass Supreme. Yeah. And our my sister, our official photographer, actually got with a guy, and that is a real car from Burlington, North Carolina. Oh, cool. And we yeah, we kind of got to know the owner, so we kind of with as a whiskey foxtrot, we're yeah. always combining ideas as right. me and Sam. Right. So that's kind of you know yep. our our combination of what the album cover looks like. We had the idea, and our, our buddy Ricky laid it all out, laid out the yeah, right. the front and back cover, the insert, the everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Well, yeah. you definitely succeeded in going for, like, that kind of retro vibe. Like, uh, I yeah. really like it, so. But, yeah, so the new record, like, who was the producer for that? It was split. Mostly it was done by Benji Johnson. Okay. Yeah, in yeah. Earth Tones Recording Studio, but we did have a couple songs uh, that we recorded with Corey Hunt. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So did you you record the entire thing at Earth Tones? Uh, all except those two songs. All except the yeah. two with Corey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got gotcha. We recorded those at his place down in Denton. Yeah. Right, right. Really awesome. So you guys both have released some solo records, and this is the first like full band record. Yeah. How different was this experience, like doing a band record versus like your own solo endeavors? Uh, it was it was definitely different because. You know, this is not like a group of musicians or or hired hands that kind of got together. You know, once a day, you know, right, out of right. the week. Not it's like, like hey, guys coming in. Playing yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know, the, it was we were recording with guys that we obviously been around for yeah. over with for over a year now, and it was real interesting going in and and going in with creative minds like that when you're all in one setting like right. that and been on the road playing oh, shows yeah, yeah. and it's crazy you think you'll go in and the songs will be one way especially playing the shows yeah. together with them oh, and yeah. then it's, it's once you get in that studio and start breaking stuff down right it's it's a it's a studio song and then it's a live song and yeah. then once you go into that studio it, it becomes a little different but oh yeah it, it was a great experience because everybody everybody's sound contributed to what this right. album is and yeah. the best part too was we got to cut most everything live oh yeah that together. was actually going to be my next question was yeah. how did you record it yeah because like when I did my solo record it was all overdubs mm-hmm. just one track after another but for the last two years we've been playing shows rehearsing and playing together 
So it was really natural for us to just go in and just right. kind of set up and, and bang it out. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, from beginning to end, when you go pen to paper onto the demo session, onto, like, when you finally had the final LP, like, how different and did each individual song change once you kind of had the full band arrangement? Like, was it similar or did, did was it, like, a different song by song? It, it, it varies based on the song. Sometimes we had a really clear idea of where we wanted to go. Um, there's one song, the last track, one of the last tracks on the album, El Camino. Yeah. yeah. We had started trying to work it up with the whole band, and it didn't ever feel quite right. And then finally, right. it was we just said, "Well, Seth and I are just gonna play it on acoustic yeah. guitar." Yeah. Yeah. And it's oh, kind of yeah. cool because it's a throwback to how how Whiskey Fox Trot started. Right. It's just the me and him, and it's a great contrast to what the like. There's just hardcore rock and roll in your yeah. face songs, oh, yeah. and then it's. Like, well, this is our roots. This is where we come from. Right. And that kind of rounds out the end yeah. of the album. On kind the of comes there. back full circle and ties it together. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, for anyone, like, uh, any new listeners to this particular podcast, like, go on and give us a brief, I guess, uh, history again of how you two kind of came to make a band. Because, like, you guys were both solo artists. And, like, right. and then you kind of came together. So, if you guys want to, like, kind of expand on that a little bit. One yeah. big mistake. Yep. I, think it's kind of <laughs> I knew how to play an A chord. Seth knew how to play a D chord. And, like, we just made a whole right. band out of it. No, we uh, we had first met a, a friend of ours putting together a songwriter night. Included Seth and I and my current roommate now, was, uh, Sarah Sophia. We did a, all did a songwriter night together. That was close to five years ago now. Right. Yeah. And we met and kind of, we'd play some shows together in between now and, in, you know, in between then and, Finally, it just got to be where we were asking each other to play mm-hmm. on the shows all the time. It was like, well, screw it. Let's just yeah. start a band. No, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, hey, is, that's what uh, everyone's dream. Y'all are actually living the dream is to start a band. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so when it came to this song, like I, I'm pretty sure like both of you guys had a bit heavy hand in writing the songs. Yeah. Like who wrote what? Did you ever write together? Did you write solo and bring them to the table? Or It's crazy. So far... As of now, we haven't written one together, but we've always been involved, like taking it with the band. Right. Everybody's been involved. So in some ways, the song has been shaped by each other. But in, in from pen to paper and song ideas of what it you know started out with, that first structure has always been either mm-hmm. I or him, and then we take it to the band. Right. Yep. So, but it, it's just one of those things. It's weird, and I feel weird at you know answering it. I think we both do because it's like. Well, y'all been in a band for right. this long. Y'all yeah. known each other. It's just yeah. one of those things that just hasn't happened yeah. yet. And when oh, it yeah. does, it's gonna be like we. It's cause the songwriting process for anybody that doesn't know. If you start forcing it, it yeah. feels fake. Oh yeah. yeah, for sure. And it feels like you're putting on a costume yeah. when you're trying to sing that yeah. song in front of people. Yeah. And that was one thing when we started. We never wanted to be yeah be that. You want to be contrived. Yeah. No, it's authenticity. I, I agree is key because you can tell when a, like a band or, or a singer feels what they're singing and exactly. a lot more emotion they put more heart into it and it's like it's hard to like you know quantify those things for people but you, you kind of know it when you see it right yeah so um and was there anybody else in the band that they contributed at all like songwriting or were they just kind of helping out with the arrangement really it, it they helped out more with arrangements and everything The all the like Seth said all the songwriting was done we'd bring basically the completed song in and then we, you know, work it up. Who's going to play where and that right. kind of stuff. Yeah. But there was one track on the end of the record that we kind of all did together, which we didn't even know we were doing at the time. <laughs> it was it was actually a we were jamming in the studio, just getting levels set and everything, right. and Benji just happened to press record. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So that, was that the uh, instrumental track? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He was setting levels, and he just said. Well, I'm just going to record that. And that's why it doesn't have a start and an end. It right. fades in. And fades. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it uh, that was a special thing because when we were sitting there listening to backtracks and, and listening to what we had that one day, it's like, hey, he said, what's this track right here? Even Benji forgot. And right. he played that. Like was, six months later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was oh, like, yeah. what in the world was that? I don't even think, I think, you know, I don't think we've spoken about it, but I think the cool thing is that that, that happened that one time mm-hmm. and to keep it in that one time and that one space and it's on this album and yeah. that's the only place right because that was a one time moment oh I yeah think that yeah. would be awesome just to kind of keep something it sacred you, yeah to, it's something that album. probably if you went back and tried to do it over again it probably wouldn't happen the same way it would feel fake and forced exactly. right yeah. Yeah. I mean exactly. I, I could do my lead guitar part <laughs> <laughs> I had that's like my one solo lick on the album as I did a bend and I know I could do that again but the rest 
not happening. Sounds like some Joe Walsh stuff. I, I can't every time I hear it, it sounds like you've got that tone and stuff to it. Oh yeah, yeah, it sounds really awesome. Just obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to like picking songs that make the record, like did you guys were all the songs that were written for the record the ones that made, or did you have a bunch of others that you kind of had to decide? You know, we had we got to leave these out. We dwindled down some, yeah, especially yeah. from the start. Yeah, the starting point. We had so we were kind of because. When we started the band, we were in the middle of making our solo records. Right. We had a bunch of songs for that. And then as we got to putting the whole band behind it almost two years, or about two years ago now, we were we had a batch of songs, and then we kept writing. So we would say, hey, this one works well, this one may not. Right. We can come back to this song later and try and do it the best we can instead of trying to rush it. Right, well, yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like... Uh, some songs go together. Oh yeah. And when you put them in that format of, of an album, you know, it makes sense when they're when they're together like that. Right. Cuz we did have some songs that were like it, it was kind of hard decisions to cut cuz like we love right. playing those songs oh, yeah. and we love yeah. how they come out, but it's like it's like that one brush stroke against everything else yeah. that would just stand out. Oh, so yeah. we wanted to keep it a, like nice package. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And like having cohesion within an album is in the sequence in, in which like you, you put the songs on the record is, is very important because like you can write like really good songs and the song may be may killer on its own but it may not yeah. fit on that particular project. Right, So exactly. you may keep it in your back pocket for something later, you know? Yeah. So, but, um, so when it came to like th- picking the songs, like I know a lot of bands, like each band is different in this regard. Like I know that like, for instance, Wilco, was is always mainly been a, a Jeff Tweedy thing, and like in or in the early days, like their basis, I think it was the basis. Jay Bennett was kind of like the filter, but like, did you guys like when you picking the songs for for the record? Was it mainly a, a Seth and Sam thing, or did like everyone kind of have somewhat of an input on which songs made the final track list? Yeah, because we you know we're always practicing together on Tuesdays, and everybody had had a a, a little bit of a say so on what on what went on what went on it. Right. I think. Uh, yeah, okay. unless unless one of us just felt really personally right. like we yeah. shouldn't put that song yeah. on yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes those things happen, and like, it's, if somebody's feeling that strongly about it, there's probably a reason for it. Yeah. It, it may not work within. They're seeing something that somebody else may not. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Which one was the one that you actually rewrote, and, or some of the ones? Uh, hard lines, uh, hard yeah. lines, and bitter pills. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Actually, that that one had the first verse was the same, but. Everything else was totally different, right? Yeah, and when we we lo- that was one where the band like absolutely fell in love with it, right? And, and we were now. like, if you could, it's like, is there any possible way? And then like he took it back, and and the song come out by the way ten times better. Like it, it comparison to what you had and what it is now, it like it, it's a blow away, blow away kind oh, of song yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how that. you feel about it, <laughs> but as a band member, it's an awesome <laughs> song. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. just another sad song. <laughs> just another sad song. Hey man, bummer jams are the way to go. That's <laughs> <really> right. Especially <laughs> you want to be country nowadays. You oh yeah. Oh, bummer jams. But yeah, so like when it comes to this record, like at least like my take on it, my initial take when I first listened to it, and then I, I kind of in my mind they reinforced it the more uh, plays I went through. Like, there's kind of, like, a, a couple of distinct, like, different sounds, I would say. Mm. There's definitely, like, um, a lot of that Heartland rock, kind of, like, petty, somewhat Springsteen-ish kind of sound. Absolutely. And then you've got a little bit more of that, like, a, a bit of a throwback country vibe on some of the tracks. Like, it was that kind of the, the meshing of, like, y'all's backgrounds coming in together? Or was, like, that just kind of the, the organic, I guess, approach that the band took in the recording process? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, like, uh-huh. like, really, like, that was... Because we've like every single person in the band, from me to Seth to Brad and Terry and Steve, everyone has so many different influences. We like a lot of the same stuff, and we like a lot right. of different stuff, and so that's why like all the songs were just kind of a culmination of it right. all. Like, like some songs you're gonna like it; they're written and they're gonna sound like a Heartland rock song. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but just the way Seth plays guitar, or the way I sing, mm-hmm. it's gonna sound have yeah. that country influence. On right. It, yeah. Sure. I mean, it's, look, I'm. I'm from Eastern North Carolina, so I totally understand. Like, I, it doesn't matter where I move, people are just like, "Where are you from?" So, you know, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a distinct uh, way we all talk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you go out of state and you're from North Carolina. Everybody thinks you're from Georgia. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like are you from Georgia? Yeah. No, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like when I was doing my internship post graduation, uh, I was up for a few weeks in DC, and like I said, my older brother has been living there for like ten years. But when I went up there, 
it seemed like I was like, you know, an animal on display at the zoo. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. because anytime I would say anything, everybody acted like it was the craziest thing they had never heard it before. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just start saying stuff. Exactly. Just start talking. Exactly. Exactly. That's it's funny. Like, what? But, <laughs> I, had, I was working a day job, and I worked at an airline, and I was responsible for scheduling training. Right. And our training center was in Miami, yeah. but the uh, the place we were scheduling with, they were based in Seattle. Oh, yeah. So I'm on the phone with this lady who's in Seattle, and, <laughs> yeah. and like, I was like, I don't know what's going on. I need, you know, I need to get this training booked, and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, well, where are you at? And I was like, well, I'm in Greensboro, North right. Carolina. She said, Greensboro, huh? That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. I said, what gave it away? She said, the vowels. <laughs> well, that's kind of how the band name come up yeah. on one phone conversation. Yeah. <laughs> My dumb ass. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I've had a similar experience, like, talking on the phone with clients at, like, my day job. Like, I've been sitting there talking to a, um, a lady at a car dealership once, and, like, so, like, I work in digital marketing. We do, like, all kinds of, like, social media stuff for, like, car dealerships throughout the Southeast. And, um... I was talking to this lady at a dealership in Georgia, I want to say, or something, but she happened to be from North Carolina, but I didn't know that at the time. Right. And, like, she got to talking to me, and I, she was just like, let me take a guess. You're from Eastern North Carolina. I was like, yes, ma'am, how'd you know that? She said, I'm from Elizabeth City. She said, oh, she said I, can, I can tell, by the way, you pronounce certain words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, what... Were there any particular songs off the record that I guess you guys each would say is your favorite? Just like your favorite, like ones that you wrote, or maybe favorite that you like to play live? Man, that's a good question. That is a good question. I think one of the from my end, from what I wrote, uh, is probably El Camino, and then my favorite one to play is Last One Out. Yeah, because oh, that yeah, one, yeah. that one, like, yeah. is just one of those. It's like a slingshot. Once that one starts, right. it's, yep. it's, yeah. it's, you're it just going. Keeps going. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd have to say hey, the same, like, because after we got the uh, the mixes back for El Camino, like, I sat on my back porch and cried. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, and, my, my favorite line in that song is the uh, the one, like, when you first, like, referenced El Camino, you're like, it's the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, that, that initially stuck out to me the first time I, I listened to that. Thank you, man. Yeah, but, uh, so, like, Andy and I were kind of, like, discussing this the other day about which ones were our favorites, and we kind of narrowed down to three, and... Admittedly, with me being the one that's here and he's sick, I uh, I probably had a little bit more influence over this. Oh, thing. Cool. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but probably my three favorite were like in order: Fulton County Night, uh, El Camino, and then First to Know. Yeah, like Fulton County Night is probably my favorite just because it really gives me that a mix of like a Springsteen slash Dances for the Lonely Era American Aquarium, and it's like just it's it's just a good rocking song. Like I heard you guys play it, I think maybe. A, I can't remember if it was the Poor House or Tin Roof. It's one of the two yeah. when you, y'all were in town, and like that one was just one that was a killer live song. Oh, yeah, man, and yeah. then El Camino, like the songwriting on that was phenomenal. So like that was just another one that I that really stuck out to me. Yeah, but but yeah, so like uh, I guess when it comes to uh, Andy had this question. So he is a truck driver, as I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but he owns his own trucking yeah. company. He wanted to know why you chose to reference a Kenworth instead of a Peterbilt because he's a he's a he's a hardcore Peterbilt guy. So <laughs> I think it, it, Kenworth is what they use in Smoking the Bandit, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. And that was already actually our logo. Right. That first okay. prints of shirts and stickers right, right. we used the Kenworth. So I was gotcha. like, well, that's that's got to be the one <laughs> yeah. if, you know, if I'm going to reference one. And and my thing was with songwriting, the more when you start naming names and you name something that's not just a general, like, uh, yeah, I could have said 18 wheeler or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I like, I like it when songs, cause then that connects, like, even though he doesn't like them, right. That connected. It's, it's still, with him. it struck yeah. a nerve with him. Like, yeah, it, it, exactly. it stuck out to him. And yeah. so when I listen to songs that have things like that and elements in it, I, that, those are the things that stick out and that I love. Like, I don't like Mustangs, but when Jason Isbell references that yeah. Mach One Mustang, it's oh, like, yeah, I yeah. think that's the coolest. It's it's the vivid imagery in, in a song that like really sticks out and strikes a nerve with people because it's something that the I, like in my opinion the main thing you want to accomplish when you write a song is to evoke some type of emotion. Yeah, yeah, and I think like the the better you are with like I guess having more of, of like I said a vivid image like in the songwriting, I think it, it, the better it goes to accomplishing that goal. You know, absolutely. So. But yeah, like he, that was the one question more so than anything he, he wanted to ask. <laughs> I mean, he, Kenworth flows better too. In the it's song. Kenworth, it yeah. Does. Pete, yeah. Sorry, Andy. Peterville just wouldn't. That's a nice have, Peter you got there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, then it just might like take a whole different turn. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Volvo? What? <laughs> yeah. 
Mac. So, like, you guys, uh, y'all been touring a bit lately. Like, have you been okay. mainly hitting the same spots in North Carolina, or have you kind of ventured out out of state, or how's that been going? Uh, for the through the end of twenty nineteen, we more or less stuck around North Carolina. Right. Um, but starting within in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be branching out more, going to Florida. All right. <clears throat> right now, I've got a show on the books to go out towards Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, nice. Do going all over the place, Virginia, and we're just mm-hmm. we're just going to try and road dog it. Is that going to be like uh, you guys doing like headline shows, or y'all planning on like opening for people out of state, or? Uh, Headlining shows or mostly just playing, you know, three or four hour shows. Where right. We can find a place. That, one of the places we're going um, in Florida is the Southern Rock and Barbecue Festival. Okay, cool. Yeah. And that's right second to last week this, of this month. Yeah. And there's we were down there last year for their inaugural one, and it was it was a blast. Dude, oh yeah. 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 A barbecue and rock and roll. Like okay, yeah, it's still my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then again, barbecue in Florida might not be. Look, like I said. I'm the Eastern North Carolina boy, so barbecue is a very specific thing to me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's I think it's like you're 18 wheelers. You gotta yeah. know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> this is exactly. a topic that we should not breach because I'm a Lexington man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Look, I understand you guys from the other side of the state, but like yeah. you know, I'm vinegar-based yeah. pork all the yeah, way through. I but <laughs> I didn't. I don't think I even actually ate barbecue last year. They oh, had really? they had this real good um, Spanish. Spanish oh, food. Yeah. They uh, had those bedroom. turkey legs there, too. Oh, yeah, Remember the turkey that? legs. <laughs> got a picture of Justin and Brad eating a, eating a turkey leg together. Yeah. Brad was Brad had his shirt unbuttoned. Yeah. And there's an awesome picture. I will have to find it. It's an awesome picture of me and Brad with both of our shirts unbuttoned, but he's holding, like, this giant, right. cartoonishly sized turkey leg. So, was it, like, yeah. bigger than State Fair turkey legs? Just, just about, just about yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah, that's a big bird. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I want to know what they're feeding those turkeys to get yeah. turkey oh, legs. Yeah, like they're growing those things in their nuclear plants. Exactly, they're shooting all kinds of steroids. <laughs> the Jose Canseco of turkeys. Exactly, as exactly. Dwayne Rock Johnson's turkey. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. But, so yeah, like so when like like I said, we just uh, you guys just released Hardlines and Headlights. Uh, what about a week ago or so? Yeah. Like, and what, what's kind of like for, so. First time as a band, what the promotional work, I guess, has been? Like, you've been hitting on, like, you know, social media, radio, uh, stuff like that, or how have you been doing that? Yeah, a little bit. It's been more, like, um, for Facebook, and a lot of the fans have been sharing it. Uh, the, our fan base has been, which we're so thankful for, and they've been getting it out. But we have sent it to some radio stations, some friends of ours, and uh, what else? I- the the, right the big thing now at this day and age is Spotify playlists and oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. So yeah. people like you and um, there's another guy that runs the Think I'll Just Stay Here meme page. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he's, he, he's been a before. huge supporter of us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so sending it to people like that who are influencers, so to speak. Right, right. But well, also, I don't know also, how much influence I have, but I'll do what I can. Well, it's more than <laughs> not at all. But yeah, I like because I, I, I thought I, I know that like. I had seen on YouTube before the first time like you guys came on the show was y'all had done like a radio interview I think around was it Winston-Salem or was it Greensboro probably was, Greensboro yeah probably yeah, Greensboro yeah. yeah we've done several in Greensboro but and, and it's awesome because those people are you know they're connected to the music community right. so in a way you start to get, be friends with them and stuff so it's oh, like yeah. Yeah, for sure it was awesome it was just like much like this interview you know we were we were almost like we knew each other and were friends before the first right. one you know oh, so yeah. it was like yeah. it was kind of getting to know each other and absolutely face to face yeah well I, I tell you like I, I always try to keep these things between th- 20 and 30 minutes for people's daily commute so we got time if you guys want to play couple songs like we got oh, some time yeah. for that if you want to yeah. do that like yeah. you guys play whatever the hell you want so <laughs> so yeah let's uh we can separate so first one is going to be el camino he says so yes, you guys take it away one two three four Lord, make me into a bird so I can fly away. Mm-hmm. Make me into a bronco, bronco, so I can run through the wild Kentucky hills. Make me into an El Camino, best of both worlds, haul my troubles away. Before 54, it'll rock and take. Pots attraction in the rear. 
help me get out of here. Baby me in chrome, bought me on the Kenworth to make the highway my home. Jake Brick be in the song. Hitch me to a train, watch me pound in the rain. As I smoke the show, try to stay in my own way. Like that sun pole gauge I'm picked all the way Running so fast That I'd hook in the sinker we fade away In the yesterday Really don't know right from wrong can't do that. How you expect me to stay that long? Oh, all my feet get to itching, hard shards are thumping, and I break the chain again. I wind up dead out there. In a ditch, in a bar, somewhere beneath the desert stars. What I'm running from finally catches up and kills me. Or I'm sending me back to me. I tell you what you can do. Play me a chrome, bowl me on the keyboard, and make the highway my home. Jake, bring me a song. Hitch me to a train, and watch me howl in the rain. As I smoke the show, try to stay in my own lane. Well, just like that, some poor gauge, I'm picked on the way. Run so fast that I hook in the sea gray. Fade away in the yesterday. Going on my head and taking on to the red line. I think it's gonna happen this time. I feel the highway moan, rattling my bones, staring in the sunshine. I'll make you go blind, running out of road. He says, What I'm told, I don't really know right from wrong. I don't really know right from wrong. I don't really know right from wrong here now. I don't really know right from wrong See that up close. Oh, like, man. Absolutely. For the show here. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, so you, you guys, like, if you want to play another one, feel free. I let's mean, do it. Yeah, so, which one do you play this time? Uh, let's do the last one out. Yeah, the last cool. one out? This All is, right. It's a rock and roll tune, but it's, it's kind of fun to do this way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, rock and roll, man. <clears throat> I'm ready.
find a way to make things right It's harder at night to sleep at all But I wait for the call knowing it won't come Things up, you guys want to plug anything like tour dates or anything? I mean, here's, here's oh, shout yeah, right here. <laughs> you make all the posters, man, well, so you know, know them better than I do. Well, we're fixing to have a lot going on, uh, but you can find all tour dates, music information, whatever online at whiskeyfoxtrotmusic.com. Whiskey Fox Trot music, music on Instagram, mm-hmm. Whiskey Fox NC on the Twitter. And we're on Facebook too. Sounds That's good. That's on MySpace. MySpace. And you guys make sure to go uh, get a copy of Hard Lines of Headlights, stream it, buy yeah. it, or stream it and buy it. Do and, both. Uh, yeah, do both. I mean, if you like country, try it out. Like right. blues, try it out. Like rock, try it out. Yeah, we're I mean, available for download yeah. now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys making drive out here and coming on the show, yeah, man. man. Like, Thanks any, for having anytime us. you guys ever want to come back on, you know, door's always open. So. Oh, dude, yeah. Yeah, man. So, I, like, I guess that's it for this episode of the Country and Cold Cans Podcast. I'm Logan. I'm not Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Williams. I'm Sam Foster. All right. See y'all next time. Peace.